Hi, my name is Juliana, and today I'm going to show you how to wind a bobbin. Machines take thread on the top and thread on the bottom. The thread on the bottom has to be wound off of the spool of thread. So what I'm going to show you today is how to put the thread onto the bobbin. So, most machines have two places that you can put your spool of thread on. You can either put them on the top, sometimes they're here on the back, sometimes the thread spindle is inside, or you can use an external thread holder. I'm using an external because sometimes the larger spool of threads don't fit so nicely in the machine. But it's the same exact principle. I'm going to just hook it up here on the top. And if you look on the top, you'll see the numbers here and the numbers over here that show you which way to go. For sewing, the numbers have a solid thread. For bobbins, the thread is depicted by little dashes. So you can see we have one point, two point, three, our tension. This little screw holds the tension for the bobbin then the actual bobbin and the shift. So sometimes the, the shift will move and sometimes there'll be an external lever that causes it to move. Some of the older machines, you have to disengage the needle. This particular machine, as soon as I push the lever in, the bobbin turns without activating the needle. You can see the needle is not moving. So ideally you don't want the needle to move when you are winding your bobbin. So I switched over to a red thread so that you could see it a little better against the white machine. And the first thing you do is you just hook this little part here, just like the diagram shows. You can see how it comes into the channel right here. Then next you're gonna go around the tension screw. This hook you don't use. This is the tension that gives the proper tension to the bobbin when it's being wound. Now this is a number 15 bobbin and you can go online and you can buy a hundred of these bobbins. I like to have a bunch of the bobbins because I also have a bobbin holder where I have all different colors of thread ready because I personally don't really enjoy winding bobbins, so I will just spend time winding up a bunch of bobbins. And then I have all the different colors and it just makes sewing easier, especially if I'm on a roll. So there's little holes, these are number 15 bobbins. There's little holes and then I just go up the middle of the middle hole there, right on the edge, you see that? I place it onto the spindle make sure my thread is, is loose and ready to go. And so now we're going to hold on to the tail and we're going to move the lever into position and that will cause the bobbin to start spinning. Make sure our thread is up here where it needs to be. And you can see it's going to wind up nice and evenly we want to make sure it winds evenly. Go ahead. So you can just snip the tail and continue winding your bobbin. And you just sit here and you wait. You'll want to make sure that your bobbin is winding evenly and you can see like from the edges it looks really nice. So this is a good bobbin wet wind. It's got good tension coming off of the screw. And, uh, if you wasn't running evenly, you would take your finger and you could even just fill in the gaps and play around with it and help it wind even. And then it shuts off automatically. So we are ready to put it into the machine. We're going to cut it off. Ta -da! So now we're going to put the bobbin into the casing underneath. I got this solid piece of fabric so when I take the, the cover off, you'll be able to see that the cover actually has lettering on my Juki. Now not all of them may have this, but the principle for winding bobbins and setting them in the machine is pretty much the same. There's usually a little catch that releases the faceplate. So I've taken the bobbin faceplate out 
and you can see on this machine it has a great illustration of how the thread is going to go around the bobbin and through the machine. So what this means, you know sometimes we look at pictures and they don't mean anything to us until we actually have to figure out why it wasn't working. So our thread is going to come off of the top and when we put it in the machine it's going to be going from the left to the right. And inside the bobbin casing, there are numbers as well. You can see one, two, three. Now this one's pretty nice. Most of them don't have um, cutters in them. I've never seen one with a cutter except for my Juki. So most of the time you just have to cut it yourself or let the machine do it. There's a little catch inside the bobbin casing. That's the first step. It's going to hold the thread. You can see it come in there. And then it's going to go around number two. And come into three. And like I said, this particular one has a cutter. Most of them don't have a cutter. And then I'm just going to pull the tail. Voila! To put the casing back in, I'm going to put this, put the little hook right into this spot, pop it into place, and I am good to go. Yep. May your bobbin always be full.